Uh, Pick up your packs. You have 40 seconds. Open it down. That's a nice one. It is a nice one. Now, again, it's not in a color that people tend to favor, uh, as green is, you know, not the happiest for a lot of players, but uh, Den Protector is insane. Yeah, I don't see any card that remotely competes with it here. Yeah, and Den Protector, make no mistake, is excellent in limited. You know, a, a lot of people lose that in translation. Oh, it's a good constructed card. It's really good in limited. Yeah, it's too. even better in limited than it is in constructed. Yeah, it is. Like, its power level relative to the cards that you play with it is, th th that delta is much higher. Yes. Card is fantastic. Five seconds. It's like it's an unblockable creature that, you know, also is card advantage. Mm -hmm. And the removal's so good in this set that it makes it even better. So especially if you're playing in green, red, and green, black. Speaking of removal, there's a flatten there in the pack. Also a pacifism. And interestingly, an epi and, and, and this is going to be, I'm curious to see where he goes from here. Because staying on one color has a lot of benefits. And Epic Confrontation is a really good magic card. It's not as good as flatten. I actually think Epic Confrontation is a better card than flatten. Come but on. That, but that flatten's in a much better color. Like, pick one, pack one, I would always take Flatten. But if I first pick a green card, there's no way I'm taking Flatten over Epic Confrontation. You think it's better than Flatten? Yeah. Wow, you're insane. Man. You think, like, you're, like, a green black deck? I mean, every green deck has a ton of creatures in this format. No, I mean, I think the card's really good. I, I just think, like, Flatten doesn't require you to have anything. That's true. You know what I mean? Like, the, the, the risk two. vector. The two's, the two's a thing, yeah. but I mean, instant speed, like, I don't know. I think yeah. Flatten's just a better baseline card, but I agree with you, by the way, about if you're green, that's a yeah. big tiebreaker. Yeah, I think pick one pack when I, I would take Flatten, but yeah. if I first pick a green card, it would be very difficult for me to... To, to move up, yeah, to move up. Yeah, yeah, I think I think the difference isn't big enough either. Yeah. So Dromica's yeah. Gift here is what Cuneo yeah. picked next. What do, you, what do you make of that card? That's an interesting one. Do you play much of that card? Uh, I try not to. Um, yeah. Not because I hate it or anything like that, but it's an uncommon. It doesn't pop up that much. And I tend to value it, I think, a little lower than, than the people who are passing to me. And by the way, we can get a feel now for those of you that were with us for the Chris Finnell draft about where Andrew Cunio is at. This is the pack that Finnell opened. Yeah, so that was, you know, a very weak pack. We saw that. Uh, Twin Bolt was taken out of here by Finnell. That's right. But uh, Jeromeca captain here for Cunio. Interesting. So he's moving into green, white so far. And that's normally my comfort zone in most draft formats. Is that right? Yeah, I'm, I'm a really big fan of drafting a good curve green white because the oh, one of those just solid. Yeah, I like to have this many two drops, this many three drops, this many four drops, and then some pump spells. JVL is just running the formula on people. No. What do we got here? A scale blessing. Now, if if you are in a heavy bolster plus one plus one counter type deck, that scale blessing can actually be quite powerful. It, it's still pricey at four mana. You know, it, it, but but it does like it can be one of those cards that, that has a profound impact on the game. Yeah, I, that's a card that initially when I looked at it, I was like, this is this is probably unplayable. And then Agreed. when I played with it, I, or when I, the first time I played against it, rather, it beat me, and it's beaten me a few times. Yeah. Now and this is actually getting pretty cool. <laughs> was that a gleam? Wow. Meme of authority at the back. Wow. Okay, so this is actually turning out pretty well for him. That's yeah. really late. That's a powerful spell. It is. It's funny. Uh, that's another one of those cards that you look at and you think, oh, it's an aura. It does some things, but it's a rare. I don't really want to take a pick on that. But again, you play against it or with it, and you're like, oh, never mind. Like that card just yeah. can take over the game absolutely on its own. It doesn't always do that, but it can. And there's a Cardian Shield Bear and a Light Walker. Wow. This, this I mean, is getting Shield Bear is so good. This is getting really interesting because he's I, like. Don't all of his cards have to do with plus one, plus one counters now? Like, he's, he's even his deck. den protector? Yeah. <laughs> like, every card in his deck? <laughs> so this could get pretty good for him. All right, there's a segmented crow tick. It looks like he'd like to keep the curve going. Remember, he took the yeah. captain. That's plus one, plus one counters. Then he took Dromica's gift, which has counters. Then he took yeah. the scale thing. And he's, the he's drafting a the theme deck here. And I, I, uh oh I how, All right, here's the test. How deep do you go? I guess he doesn't have another pick anyway, but... <laughs> I want to know if Servant of the Scale makes it into his deck. As would I. I mean, it's... If his deck is what his deck is, is it that bad? I mean, I, I haven't played with it yet, but... It's terrible. It, yeah. that, that's a good card there. You got Mages. Yeah. Pretty late. That card's really good in the aggressive strategies. Yeah. You, how many of those would you play? Um, you know, if you had your, your formula kind of curve, you know, beat down deck. 
I, I think you can play as many as like three or four. Even. By the way, he just picked up another plus one plus one counter cares card. Like yeah, he is fully left. dedicated to the scene. What, what were you saying? One or two? No, I think, I, think play, I think you can play like as many as three. I think that card is three. You, may even want to you play really four. like that card. Four. Yeah, I mean you can play a ton of that card. Wow. It's one of those cards that is, can be redundant. You know what I mean? It's, be, it's better if you have more of them. But but you need creatures. Like those yeah, are. But taking, I mean, you're talking about like like you're not playing that card in a deck that has less than sixteen guys anyway. Okay. All right. Let's take a. Look. By the way, he's gonna go through and take a look at what he's got in his pile. Here. I would think I would think playing between zero and one of those is where I want to be. They chain together quite nicely. Oh yeah, they just keep things tapped down forever. Yeah, like I, I, I've drafted aggressive green white decks, like never with this much of a plus one plus one counter theme. But, um, I mean, I've been really impressed with Aegis. I think like okay. you can just like play it turn after turn and tap down their big block and get them. Now he also picked up a conifer strider. That's a nice one with Aegis. Yeah, right. It gets it to respectable toughness. Uh, another thing about Conifer Strider is that in any bolstering that can, that's going to happen in this game can go on the Strider as it has the lowest possible toughness while the, you know, with the creature still being alive. So, you know, if, if Andrew finds himself in a spot where he does have a lot of random bolstering, which he's already got a fair amount of here, uh, you know, or throwing counters around, like moving them, uh, that Strider can get, you know, really, really big. All right, let's see what he's got here. So he opened the Death the Deathbringer Regent here that makes its way down to Chris, but a pacifism is what he's pulled to the front. This seems to be a pretty clear pick here over the Shield Bear. Yeah, I, I mean, I think they're actually pretty close. Shield Bear is really powerful. Oh, come on, man. But, I, I mean, you obviously take pacifism, okay. but I'm just saying that, like, like Shield Bear You think it's Shield a consideration? Is, yeah, I think Shield Bear is probably the best green common after the amount I've played. Like, I, I like it more than Bowmaster. Nah, and Epic Confrontation's probably better. Epic Confrontation's way better. Bowmaster's better. Yeah, you're right. Bowmaster's probably better. Yeah, I mean, Shield Bear is fine. And I think, like, look, I think he's earmarked that one for wheeling. That's fair. You know, come back to daddy. Hopefully. <laughs> come back around. Because, you know, I mean, nobody wants those to be in green. Nobody wants to be in green. And, and, and uh, those, that extra plus one plus one counter that he's throwing around really helps out his deck. This is going to be sweet. I, I think his deck's actually really good. I agree. This, I mean, this table it just seems like the pod has a bunch of really powerful cards. Oh, we got another Den Protector. Wow. You know, we were going crazy over yeah. the Fennel stack. And, and now, this deck is kind of insane. Yes, like, I've been really happy to have this deck. And it's funny because, you know, he pulled the, the herd to the front there. And I think he was like, okay, sure. And then it's like, oh, I'll just take yeah, the second well, Den Protector. This is Why nice. not? Yeah. Herd, actually, is another. That's, yeah, there's another card that's better than Shield Bear. So I'm, yeah, it's, it's, you know, Shield Bear is not even close. It's falling down a little. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, was trying, I was trying to work you down the list slowly, but we got there. We got there eventually. <laughs> I like this. I like what Cuneo's doing here. Yeah, as do I. I mean, this little tactician there. If he wants and it. He finally kind of ran out of gas here. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the Glade Watcher. I think that card's quite good and very playable. Yeah. Um, he should be able to get it to formidable range where it can start beating down in the mid to late game, no problem. Um, that card's more suited for, you know, the slower green, red, yeah. green, black strategies. Green, black strategies is what I think of, too. Um, still, you know, whatever. He'll pick one up here. It wasn't as good as a Den Protector he got. No, no, it's not. He also just passed an or er, Dragon Lord's prerogative there. And we know where that ends up. Pick up your packs. You have 25 seconds. And another Conifer Strider. That's a good card in his deck. I mean, that card in his deck has the potential to go into Sagu Mauler mode, you know? Five seconds. Draft. Yeah, I don't really think there's much of an option over there. Again, you see all these really good blue and black cards flying around the table here, and we know where they end up. A couple seats away, Chris Finnell is sculpting beautiful blue-black control deck. Hmm. So things are getting a little... Yeah, they're kind of drying up. They're not quite as exciting this the second half of the second pack here for Cuneo. I mean, he's still picking yeah. up cards, right? Like he's going to get a Glade Watcher out of this pack yeah, and sort of keep moving forward. Very but. playable in all the green decks of the format. Yeah. And... Draft. They do travel in packs, I mean, Two of them, you're yeah. almost a formidable on your own. 
Yeah, they're cheap true. to activate. You know, you can just sometimes, I mean, I've seen people literally go Glade Watcher, Glade Watcher, Glade Watcher, and just activate you. <laughs> I'm hitting you for nine, you know. Kind of thing can happen. All right, there's a segmented yeah, Crow Tick. Oh, that's a nice one, a Tarka Beastbreaker. Yeah, that is a nice one. Yeah, I like that one. Good good early game, good late game. That's kind of what you want out of your two drops, your, your cheap creatures. Herald of Dromic is fine, but you know the Vigilance doesn't come up as often as you'd think. Yeah, this, this format's a lot about just like hitting each other back and forth. And, yeah. uh, you know, that's a card that just, I guess, gives you the option to trade, but his deck definitely does not want to trade. He doesn't have a, or I guess he has double gun protector. Yeah, that is true. There will be draws where he's going to want to. There's a Herald. Then again, though, the... What, what do you think about the Colossus on Yearling? Eh, just, again, I think it's a like green-black card. meh for you? I mean, it's pretty good in green-black, right? Okay, yeah. Shields up. Yeah. He takes a Herald to draw. I like though. toughness. I think, it's, I think it's awesome it's sealed. Mm. Of course, if you're playing green and sealed in this format. Cuneo played yeah. uh, blue-white yesterday to get himself here Pick up your packs. at the top draft table. His deck was unbelievable. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. Enduring Scale Lord. Now, here's the interesting thing. Cuneo does not like that card. I know he doesn't like it. He just, he, he's not a fan of these uncommon dragons. And look at that. He's passing it yeah, in this like, deck. He's I know you passing don't like that it, card but in like, this deck. This is the, this, like, is, this deck is absolutely like, there, there isn't a better deck for that there card. Is, th this is and exactly the deck that it's for. It's the same colors and, the, okay, by the way, it, yeah, look who's back. home. Yeah. <laughs> But, but yeah, this is the deck that you home. want for that. This is the deck that you want. It's the plus one, plus one counter theme deck. He didn't take it. He hates it. He's just like, no, I refuse. It's on a matter of principle? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. I think it was correct to take it. I think, I think you should I, take it. I agree that it was correct to take it. Yeah. I, I agree with Cuneo's base stance that those cards are overrated. I think a lot of people see those and say, oh, it's a dragon. I'll just take a dragon. It's sweet. And they're, they're not that great. They're kind of slow. They're hard to cast. They're not really worth splashing. The blue-black one, pretty nice. It's fine. I, well, it's better than the other ones. I agree. But, I mean, it's just sort of, eh, you know, like none of those really have the punch that you'd hope. Even Tactician is pretty nice, actually, at this point. Yeah. Uh, but I think that when you have what he has going on here, I do think that that's the kind of card that is a good place to put your mana in the late game, and it, can, it, it it's going to be an absolute must-kill. You, you, the Dream yeah. Scale Lord is going to be a stone must-kill in this deck. I, I mean, I, I would think absolutely you pick it up have taken there. it. I think you pick it up there. Yeah, I think you do. I think that's when you make the exception. But like I said, you know, Cuneo, he plays a lot of this format and he knows, doesn't like it. It's not his kind of card. So Draft. he passed it. Please pass your last card. Players, you now have 45 seconds to review your pick. Yeah. Now right, he does so, have that triple Glade Watcher yeah, green. Yeah, he did, yeah. <laughs> he, he picked up the, the, the extra Glade Watcher there. So he's got three of those now. And like we noticed, the Guardian Shield Bearer also came back to his deck here. So I like what that pack did for him, ultimately. Like, it felt like it dried up a little in the middle, but he wheeled pretty much everything he wanted to, including the Avon Tactician there as well. And the early part of the pack was great for him. He got a Pacifism and another Den Protector. So I think that was a, a good pack for him overall. Yeah, I mean, it, as far as, you know, drafting a green-white deck in this format goes, like, that's about as nice as you could ask for for a pack two after, you know, you have decently solid pack one. I mean, his deck has a lot of a lot of multiples of cards. You know, he's got a consistent strategy, great curve. Um, major issue is that a big part of his curve can't really apply pressure because he's, he's got triple clade watcher. Oh, that thing applies but, pressure. It just takes a little while getting there. Yeah. I mean, the cool part about the Glade Watchers are that they, sure, they're not a big punch in the early game because they can't attack yet, but also they make it so your opponent can't attack you. Like, they're That's bigger true, than everything your I mean, opponent's doing. Sometimes they're in the air. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, it, it takes a while to get those interceptors face up and attack. You know? It, That's fair. And by that time, you're like, activate, 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 attack, or 12, or whatever. Yeah. All right, so one more pack here for Cuneo. I think this pack, this deck has come together quite nicely for him. And I think he's looking really good coming in this last pack. So Dragon Lord Dromica, anybody? Didn't get past one? He didn't get past one. I think this is crazy. It's no, so no. unfair. Yeah, so how about here? What if he gets uh, Dromica the Eternal? That'd be a is, nice one. Would that one. be fine? I think it, that's his best possible. And then get past right? one of those? Yeah. Okay. So that's, so that's, that's what we're hoping for. We're hoping for Dromica the Eternal, getting past Dromica the Eternal. Blossoming Sands? Ooh. Right. Didn't get that. Just, uh... 
And it looks like he's going to be on maybe a feral crew shock here or the land. Like, what does he want here? He might just take Avon Skirmisher. I'm not even kidding. Reach of Shadows is the best card out of the pack. I mean, I would I would either take Blossoming Sense or Avon Skirmisher. And Avon Skirmisher is probably in a wheel, so. Uh, if it doesn't, then something went horribly awry in the middle pack there. Right, do you like that card? It's got I'm, a bunch of counters. His deck. He's got a bunch of counters to throw around. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, that thing becomes a wind drake super fast in this deck. I just can take that as a good card. It's a babe. I respect it. Well, why, do you, why do you think he took, like, the, there was a Reach of Shadows in the pack. I mean, Reach of Shadows. If you're going to splash. Reach of Shadows is like a five mana spell against his deck where every single one of his threats costs, like, you know. So less you think than five he's not mana. trying to splash it, he was just cutting it? Yes. Okay. That gets to the heart of what I was asking, I suppose. Hey, do you want more plus one, plus one counters? Because now here's a Hunt the Week that can give yet another. Also, kill something. Those work well with the Glade Watchers, also. It's on theme. Yeah. Not beautiful, right? I mean,. It's on, on Make a 4 4 his... defender isn't amazing, but you know, I said they do end up starting to attack later. And you know, gives a quick read to the Amazon Rune Mark before he ships away the rest of the pack here. That scale blessing that he picked up super early is looking so nice right now. Yeah. It's one of those cards that, again, like yeah. early on, we were like, ooh, third pick? That's, that's aggressive, but now it's the best card in this deck. You are correct. <laughs> that's not very good. All right, let's see what Kunio picks up here. Oh, that's decent. It's not the worst. No. Obzon King Guard's fine. It works really well against the aggressive decks. It's solid. It's sort of one of those middle middle grade creatures. It's going to have life like a good percentage of the time for him here. Yeah, it's gonna. It can also pick up quite a few plus one swan counters. Then he can play a white oh, permanent, and good, then you get a really big good point. life linky guy, and that's really hard to race. To remember, the, the life swings that that guy produces are actually double its power. Right. Because you're getting life in addition to making them lose it. Draft. Big life flankers. Definitely win games. Pick up your packs. You have 30 seconds. Let's see. Gurmog Angler. It's a nice one. Soul summons there. Solid two drop. I think we're going to just see him take a soul summons here. There aren't really many other cards that compare to it. Mastodon's fine, but obviously the two-drop, just better. He also has a ton of things that he can uh, kind of abuse with the Soul Summons. Like, he has double den protector, you know? He has a lot of, like, shield bears. Like, that, that Soul Summons is a lot better than just a grizzly bears in his deck. Lay out your pack to your left. You should have 11 cards. The double den protector is so much better in green, black, or green, red. Getting back removal spells. Yeah, getting back those cheap removal spells. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's that whisper of the wilds, but here's a cash defenses, and interestingly, he's looking at that. That can combo with his conifer strider, and of course, it just dumps a bunch of counters. He does have double <laughs> conifer strider. I mean, soul summons is like the obvious pick, but I I like this pick. I like that pick too. Also, you just Shows you range. just you just mentioned it. He's got double den protector. Like that's yeah. the kind of card he can just be like, whatever. Like I'll play it out there if you kill my guy. I'll play den protector later, get my guy back, or I'll get back the cash yeah, defense. Yeah, you can also just ca cash defense is on the den protector. If, and he, then if he gets that to happen, it's unblockable. it's unblockable. Yeah, so that that's really cool. And there's another plus one plus one counter themed card here with Obs on Sky Captain. Seems like a solid pickup too. Absolutely. Card's good. It's yeah. a good card. Good magic card. It makes my deck almost every time I'm in white. Actually, yeah. pretty much every time. It does for me, too. I don't think I've not played it when I've been in white. I had such high hopes for Jeskai Barricade. Didn't really yeah. come through for me. I, I thought that card was going to be pretty good, too. Me, too. I mean, it, you can still do stuff with it. It just doesn't have quite enough punch compared to what you need to do in this format. Yeah, hey, think, Windswept Teeth is actually a reasonable pickup for him here. Yeah, really good with the Den Protectors, even. like, a way, like It's if not constructed, so you need a way to get things in your graveyard to interact funny. with it. And yeah, it's, it's, it's directly on color for him here, too. So I'd be happy with that, that pick. Yeah, I would be, too. It increases the power of his deck by quite a bit. Just got Barricade is, is odd because 
I feel like it could have been good in so many different draft formats, and this format just is not the right format for the card. Yeah, he never really found a home. You're right. There's just another Soul Summons there. I think he's probably getting to be a little Soul Summons overloaded here at some point, right? Yeah, I mean, you're just uh, two twos for two, man. Yeah, they're all right. Fine. Bread and butter. That's what you need. So what, do you, so what do you make of this deck overall here? I like this deck. I think this deck is really good at applying early pressure. I think this deck is not very good against Double Crux of Fate, but I, I would be very happy with this deck coming out of the draft. Based on the cards he was passed, the cards in his deck. Here's the pack that he opened. Again, he has the choice between Amid Skirmisher and Blossoming Sands. He's going to take the Blossoming Sands, and I agree with that. Although, I think Amid Skirmisher is a fine card in his deck. You do? Yeah, I, I would I would play that card. You would over. go that low for this deck? Yes, I would stoop I would stoop to those to those depths in a deck like this. Pick up your pass. You have ten seconds. And we're kind of in the dregs here of this yeah. third pack. There's really nothing left here for Andrew, but uh, I think this draft went well for him. I, I like the way he he maneuvered there. You said you'd rather have him take the scale guard. I'm, I'm inclined to agree with you. I think the, the that is the one, our scale lord, enduring scale lord. And that's the one that I kind of would like to see in his deck here. But I thought that was an interesting pick in any case, and, and I'm certainly glad that we got some discussion out of it too. The I, I think more about the bathe and dragonfire pick. Yeah, uh, pick one of this pack. One thing I like about that is that a lot of the time on turn three, he's going to be playing a morph in his deck, and that morph might be Den Protector. And when you play a morph on turn three and your opponent has Bathe and Dragonfire in their hand, if they don't have a three drop, they're just going to Bathe and Dragonfire and morph because it's, yeah. it's an Every obvious time. play and it's the good use of your mana. Whereas, you know, a card like Reach of Shadows isn't really going to do that. So he wants to, you know, get the card advantage out of his Den Protectors because on turn four, he's going to be able to, you know, play a two drop, play a Soul Summons, which he has a bajillion of. No, he just picked up yeah. another one. So he plays the Soul Summons, manifests the top card of his library, then that three drop that he played that was a morph down Den Protector, he can pay two mana, flip that up, return that Soul Summons back to his hand. And, you know, Dragonfire breaks up that whole combo. Mm. Whereas a card Reach like Reach of Shadows is just too, too little too late. All right, so that's going to do it. We got to see Andrew Cuneo draft his green-white deck. And uh, it looks pretty good. He has some stiff competition. You can see a Johnny Magic down there. There's a Chris Fennell down in the corner as well.